welcome to Revelations with Delusional Knitter. I'm Angela, your host. It is Friday, <laughs> January 9th, 2015, and this is episode 108. On to updates and housekeeping. Welcome if you are new. If you're returning, I thank you as always, and I thank you for coming back. I did take a little hiatus over the holidays. Um, if you use iTunes, please leave a star rating and or review. If you're on YouTube, you can leave comments there. And most of all, if you're a member of Ravelry, if you come and join the group, I post the episodes there so you can comment on different episode threads or just in general. And I would appreciate it very much and I will comment back to you. Week in review. Well, it's not a week, is it? It's been more like a month. Um, let's see. Not a whole lot has gone on. We had some construction done in the house. That's one of the reasons I didn't podcast, and then um, it was the holidays, so just super busy and, you know, whatever. So, 1-6-15, January 6th, 15, marks the end of the third year that I've been podcasting. Wow. So we're moving into the fourth year. So I've been doing this for three years now. It's crazy. Um, if you started watching more recently, well, the episode number would give you a hint, but the podcast used to be on Blip, but then they started booting off a lot of people, so all those episodes are gone. I do have them on an external hard drive, but um, I have not archived them anywhere yet so that they're accessible. I don't know if I'm gonna. I might, but I don't know. You guys can let me know if you're interested in that or not. Um, what else did we do? We did go to see Into the Woods with my mom and her friend. Uh, that was kind of our Christmas get-together and it was excellent. I liked it a lot. And actually, um, Rob Marshall, the director, is the cousin of my mom's friend that we went with. And on the way out, because that's closer to where I used to work, I ran into my previous co-worker, my knitting buddy, who would go to all the fire festivals with me, so that was awesome. I like attacked her in the hallway. <laughs> caused a big problem with the line because <laughs> she was coming in to go see Into the Woods, which is funny. Um, so she was in the, you know, hand the person your ticket line and I completely, ah, you know, and then there, I noticed there was a bunch of people standing behind her and I was like, oh, maybe we should move over. <laughs> so um, it was nice to see her. So we should hopefully be doing lunch or something soon. Uh, then my husband and I went last week, I want to say, to see the last Hobbit movie, and that was very, very good. That one was actually very, very good. He said that it was his favorite so far, and it's, it amazes me sometimes, these movies that are like two and a half hours, that you sit in the theater, and for me, other than I start getting uncomfortable physically, because I've been sitting in a chair for so long, I would never know two and a half hours have gone by. That's the only reason I notice is because like my back starts to bother me and I start getting stiff. But um, it's really, really good. And so it is 2015 now, although it does not feel like it to me at all. And I think that's because this year I worked Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I kind of um, just like skipped over the holidays completely and I just feel like I'm in limbo, <laughs> like something didn't happen, and it's not the new year yet, we didn't have Christmas, I mean we did. My husband had put up the tree and, you know, we exchanged gifts on our own and everything, but I didn't do all those things that usually happen, you know, I didn't see people that I usually see, so it does not feel like Christmas happened. Um, what I would like to do for this, I'm not doing resolutions, I'm not doing goals, I'm not doing anything this year, that's what I have decided for myself. Uh, what I would like to do though, so it kind of is a goal, but you know, I would just like to take time and do things and almost like, you know, live in the moment <laughs> because especially now with my job the way it is now, it is sometimes we're not busy at all and we're just sitting there and goofing off and everything, which is fine, but um, a lot of times it's very hectic and very fast-paced and very just like frantic because things have to get done right now. It's not your traditional job where you sit at a desk and you know, oh, I need this report by Friday. These are officers in the field with a person. They need an answer right now. <laughs> so um, 
when I do have my days off, I want to make sure I take time and not necessarily take time to do nothing because that's wasteful and not fun, I think. I want to take time to do things that are creative and artistic and but calm and slow and nice. Um, knitting obviously is one of those, spinning is one of them as well. But I would also like to, I had shown before on the podcast I was getting into Zen Tangles. I did sign up for a craftsy class on drawing. And it's funny because I had thought about it before. Um, when we went to the movies the other weekend, my husband and I, I ran over to the mall because I had some things to do there. And there was a man sitting in one of the sofas in one of the little, you know, middle bits in the mall with a sketchbook. And he was sketching something. And I was like, oh, see? Yeah. You know, things like that. I would love to go out and sketch things when I have my days off, go do like fun little projects like that outside. That's the other thing I need is to get out of my house because too often I just sit here for hours and hours on end doing whatever I'm doing, you know, knitting, which is fine, but like when the weather's nicer too, mind you. Although there are things you can do inside, but not here. Like I can do inside somewhere else. Um, for example, in the craftsy class, and which I just barely started last night at work actually, I was looking at the first part of it, um, this artist that is doing the class showed a sketch of like a Starbucks, you know, and it was really, really good and fun, and I think that would be something to focus on that's nice and, you know, and I could do that at work. I can knit at work too, I just don't because... Um, I mentioned before, I sit here for so many hours, like I'll knit for an hour or two before I go to work sometimes. Repetitive motion, it's just too much if I sat at work for eight hours and knit, so I like to leave it at home so I give myself a break because I'm really good at not stopping something like that until it's way too late and something really hurts, like my wrist really hurts, my shoulder really hurts, so that would be a different medium that would not be such a repetitive thing. So that's my philosophy for this year. Let's see, Revelations. I did get back my um, Knitters Guild Association. Sorry, battery's charging. I wanted to take it off. Knitters Guild Association Master Hand Knitter Level 1. I did get it back. Um, and I do have some resubmits to do, which are fine, but they do a lovely review. Like, they tell you everything you did well, and they comment a lot on what you did right. And what you did very well, which is nice. Um, so I, I do have some stuff to resubmit. And three swatches I have to re-knit. Two swatches I have to redo the written work for. And there were nine questions I have to clarify or add information. And then the mitten I have to resubmit for various reasons. One of which I knew was probably not going to fly, but I really did not feel like redoing it <laughs> again. So. Um, I just figured I'd wait and see what they had to say because the other thing is when they do the review they give you tips um, or point you in the right direction they don't flat out tell you what you have to do well they, they flat out tell you this is not right you need to fix this but they don't tell you how you still have to go figure it out yourself but they do point you in the right direction so I will be working on that um, and then for Christmas for my husband I made him something and I tricked him, and I kept telling him, don't come in my room. I'm building you a Christmas present. He's like, you're building it? What do you mean you're building it? Because I didn't want him to know I was needing something, because then he might remember what it was. Because I figured he forgot, because I showed these to him a long time ago, and then I thought he forgot what you did. And they are the Deep Blue Sea Shark Mittens, I think is what they're called. <laughs> oh my god, they're so funny. Uh, they were fun in it. They were a little challenging. <laughs> they just cracked me up. The only challenging part was you knit the mitten, which was absolutely fine. You knit the fin, which was absolutely fine. You knit the mouth, which was also fine. Then you sewed the mouth on. That was a pain in the butt. As well as was uh, embroidering the teeth, which I did before I sewed it on, so it was a little bit easier. But getting them even and spaced right and everything like that was a, quite a pain in the butt, but um, I was happy with how they came out at the end, so those were fun. That was a fun little surprise for him. Um, what else did I have? The Star Anise hat I finished, and I like that a lot. 
I haven't even worn it yet, but I did block it, so I'm not putting it on right now because I had my winter coat on while I was running errands earlier, and it's one of those like puffy jackets. So my hair is super staticky right now. If I put this hat on, bad things will happen. But it came out really nice and it fits really well. And that's the Star Anis hat. And this was in, um, what was the yarn? <laughs> was it Mad Tosh? I don't know. I would have to, it's on my project page on Ravelry. I freak, I totally am totally blanking on what the yarn was. Um, but it's a nice yarn, whatever it is. The sock yarn blanket I revived. I don't even remember when I started that. Because I don't think it was last year, I think it was the year before. But I have a whole bunch of bits of leftover sock yarn from various projects, as well as some wonderful viewers have sent me sock yarn before. And what it is, is it's a mitered square blanket that you just keep adding on and adding on and adding on. Um, so I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun. Because each little square takes like, you know, 20 or 30 minutes, if that. And you just keep adding on and adding on as you go, as you get more projects done where you have leftovers for. So I will keep on doing that. And what I do is every time I finish a row, um, I go back the row below and weave in all the ends because I'm not weaving in all those ends at the end of the blanket. Let me tell you, that's not happening. So, and the other thing I've been knitting on, which I have also revived, you may have seen this one before, is the penguin pillow. That was a Knit Picks kit. And I had started it I don't even know when. Probably two years ago. And I want to make it for a friend. And what happened was I had done the white before. And it's a kit. So you only have whatever they put in the kit. And I ran out of white because my gauge was off. And my gauge wasn't off so terribly that like the pillow wouldn't have worked. But it was off enough that I ran out of yarn. So I have revived this project. I've changed needle sizes as well as bought another skein of yarn. So that will not happen again. Um, I may not even need that skein of yarn, but I don't care. I have it just in case. So that should work out much better this time. And I just started it the other day, so I only have like, what, an inch or an inch and a half or something. I would like to get that done by February, because I believe we're, we'll probably see them in February, because the last two years there's a Winter's Farmer's Market in this big greenhouse that's it's like an hour away, but it's a humongous greenhouse, like it goes on forever. And it's a big building, and it's a really cool building, because it's not just like your, your standard like rectangular greenhouse, it's just a big building, so there's turns and twists and stairs and all kinds of stuff. And they have the Winter's Farmer's Market, so they have all kinds of food products and like jams and chocolates and things like that, but they also have a couple of the Winter's Farmer Market ones are Fiber Days, which is the ones that we usually go to for me, <laughs> so that I can get some fiber or some yarn or something. So we had planned on doing that again this year. We don't know yet because they didn't update their schedule yet for which days are the Fiber Days, so we don't know which day we're going to go yet. Also depends on what I have off, or I'll have to take a day off, which is fine. But um, So yeah, I'd like to get that done by the time I see them. I also wanted to, it's a couple that we're friends with. For the man, I wanted to knit him a sock head hat, so I'd like to try and get one of those started as well soon. Um, let's see, string theory, I have nothing. That's another thing I really gotta get off my butt this year and get back into spinning a lot more. Um, I have so much fiber and so many spindles, and I have my wheels, but I just need to do it. So that's on the agenda coming up soon. I would like to do, but I don't know if I'm organized enough. People probably think I'm organized only because I have an excellent memory. For example, the other day the lieutenant asked me, um, hey, what was that girl's last name? How did she spell that? And I just rattled it off without looking it up. And um, 
that's, I think, why people think I'm very organized, because I can remember random stupid things like that. Like how somebody spelled their name, what a license plate was, what a phone number is, what a zip code is, you know, things like that. But, and I am organized in that I have organized chaos. I, bills, books, you know, yarn, whatever, is a total, it could be, like, I have a pile of yarn on the chair over there. I know what's in it, though. So, like, if you ask me for something, I could find it in a pile. <laughs> It's not necessarily that it's organized, it's just I remember where I saw it last. So, um, I have no idea where this train of thought was going. Oh, yes I do. I was thinking this year, because I wanted to do one in like, I don't know, 2012, a breed study, and actually pick like one breed a month to focus on, but I don't know that I'm organized enough to actually do it, which is why it's never been done in the past, so, we'll see. We'll see. I would like to, um like the master hand knitter program, get like a three ring binder and actually make like, you know, a spinning journal, but we'll see if that even happens. Scrolls, I don't have any book review for today. Um, testaments, what I do have for that are my Christmas present goodies to show you that my husband got me. Got me some really awesome stuff. So, let's see, in no particular order, I got a sock project bag or a small project bag. And this one is from Slip Stitch Studios. Oh, they even have a little tag. I didn't even notice that before. They have their own little tag. How cute is that? With a little sheep on it. That is so cute. So this is Slip Stitch Studios. And I just favorited some stuff on Etsy, so I gave them my Etsy list. And it's a nice little sock project bag. The bottom is square. So I'm sure if you had it like full, it would sit flat on your desk. And it also has pockets is in it. I have no idea how that's showing up in the camera. So it's got two little pockets in it and then it's got the strap for you to carry. Apparently it's got this super cute little tag with a sheep on it and it's got a drawstring with one of those little doodads. I have no idea what those are called. So really nice bag. It's nicely constructed. The sewing is very nice. So that is Slip Stitch Studios and they are on Etsy. Um, what else did he get me? He got me a, what does this say? <laughs> they also sent a little, um, needle hook chart. And uh, there's a button, I just noticed it, it said project bags don't count. I'm assuming as like stash. <laughs> so that was one. And then from Silly Salmon Designs, and I had their card on my desk a while ago. Like I said, organized chaos. I know it was on the desk. It probably still is. I just can't find it. Anyway, he got me a spindle bowl. Oh, black palm, I think this is called. Really gorgeous wood. And um, I have, I might only have one. I might have two of their supported spindles. And one of them is also has black palm in it. So that's really cool. And... What else did you get me? Some yarn, of course, right? And this yarn is really cool. It's very, um, I, uh, is all I can say for my brain right now. This is Knit Circus Yarns, and it's a gradient, but it's a really cool gradient. See what I mean? It's almost like stripey. And there's the yarn. It's a really cool color. And I think this one is actually what it is. Yeah, it is. So you also get a little pin with the actual colorway on it. So that's what it should knit up like. So that's really cool. And it, they're split, you know, into two cakes so that you can knit them up. Um, and then the amazing thing that he got me that I had no idea about. That is still wrapped up. I did get a um, easel frame to hold it the other day at Joanne's, so I can put it up now. I was afraid of it getting damaged, so I was waiting until I got an easel frame. This is really cool. Let me see if I can open it again. There it is. So, if you have not watched the podcast before, I'm a huge fan of The Nightmare Before Christmas. And what this is is. It's got plastic wrap on the front, so it looks a little bubbly and weird. 
This is Nightmare Before Christmas. It's actual film cells from a theater that played the film. They took the film and cut it up, cut up the frames, and put them like this. And then it, like each one has, you know, a certificate of authenticity. And on the front it tells you what frames they are from the movie. But that was so cool. It's so cool. I don't know how it's going to show up in the camera, but each little tidbit there is an actual frame from the movie. And there's some really good scenes on this one. Um, up here in this corner is like the cover one. Although it's Jack and Sally up there, I think. Yeah, it's Jack and Sally. But on that, that knoll. Is that not awesome? It's awesome. It's really cool. Really unique. Really, really cool. Just put that back. And actually, you had to order it from England. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But Because no one my luck, I'll drop it on the floor. So those are my Christmas goodies this year. Some really cool fibery stuff. And I also got um, the second How to Train Your Dragon movie on DVD. And a little toothless figurine. But I don't have them in here right now. So, so that was pretty cool. The other thing I wanted to show you that was not... Um, that didn't have anything to do with Christmas, but... In the whole drawing thing and everything, and like creativity and stuff, I was trying to look up some stuff for um, practicing drawing and things like that. And I found it on somebody's blog. It's called the Wreck This Journal. And it looks like this. And I think this will help a lot with creativity because what it is essentially is this booklet and its instructions on pretty much destroying the book, like just making a mess out of it. Which is fantastic, because even in the short bit that I watched from that craftsy class on drawing, even that artist, the instructor, had said, you know, these are the different sketchbooks you can get. You can get the standard ones with the, you know, spiral bound, or you can get really, really nice, funky ones with cool covers. And then he said, the only thing is, these ones with the cool covers, I never want to draw in them, because I don't want to, you know, ruin them or use them or whatever. And I was like, oh my god, I so have that problem. I have so many notebooks. Or sketchbooks are things that I just never use because I don't want to ruin them, which is stupid. Really stupid. So this book looked really, really cool because essentially you're supposed to like just annihilate this book and do really horrible things to it. The things that make people like me cringe, like when I have books, I never, like they're never even, like even this one. I use this a lot. My Treasury of Knitting. Um, Stitch Dictionary, but look at it. It still looks brand new, doesn't it? I've had it for years. And it still looks new. <laughs> like, that's how I treat books. Um, so yeah, books that get marred or, you know, pages ripped or something really freaked me out. So today I got this in the mail, and I opened it up, and one of the instructions, for example, is to crack the spine. That just makes me cringe. I don't want to do it. And then I laughed because when I flipped it over, I was like, what is this? And then it says, tape this journal closed and mail it to yourself. <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen to this in the mail? <laughs> oh. So I'm going to try and have a lot of fun with this because that's the whole point of it. But this author, um, and illust I think she, what did she call Illustrator, I think she was called. Uh, Carrie Smith has a couple of different types of journals like this that are kind of like creative outlets, creative instruction books that, you know, give you all kinds of ideas on what to do or to just like get out of your box and be creative and not worry about getting dirty or messing something up. For example, rub here with dirt. So just take the book and like rub it on the ground. <laughs> Cracks me up and it sounds like a lot of fun. So hopefully I'll be showing you this and it will actually not still look like this perfect book with no marred anything on it, right? We'll see. But I thought that might help me with drawing and, you know, doodling and things like that. And I thought it would be a lot of fun. Um, I think... Hmm, I should probably pause here and break this up because I think I'm going to run out of time. Um, because I have three minutes and something left according to my little timer over here. 
I figured this one would go a little overboard because I haven't recorded in a couple of weeks. So, let me pause here. You won't notice because I will be right back in a second. All right, moving on to intentions. So Delusional Mirror Designs group is pretty busy, which I'm very excited about. I had one test knit already, and that was the Michaela shawl. That was a heart-shaped shawl. I have not even knit mine yet. <laughs> I kind of did that on purpose because I wanted to see if I could design something without knitting it. And kind of get into the, you know, tech editing mind frame where you have to like knit it in your head which worked out pretty well. There were a couple of things that the stitch counts didn't work out. Um, there was a test knitter though who knits extremely fast. I don't know if she knits, well she does knit extremely fast because there's only so many hours in a day but she's in a different time zone in a different country so that had something to do with it I think because if I sent her something at night when I get up in the morning though she would have it done so she still knits very fast because she was still knitting it within one day but um, I think it just seemed really fast because I just slept and woke up and it's done so <laughs> um, but Sarah was an excellent test knitter because she would also find these errors prior to knitting it I think when she looked at the chart she was checking it before she was knitting it and um, which is awesome because I don't want anybody to be frustrated test knitting something for me but sometimes it happens because it's just that's the whole point of test knitting to see if it works but um, it was pretty successful and I'm very happy with the pattern and the charts and everything like that so once I knit mine which I have yarn for over there um, then I can get photos and everything the only thing is I'm thinking I'm not going to get photos until spring because it's a nice lace light shawl it's really not a winter thing, so I don't know where I'm going to get photographs, but um, outside right now. So we'll see. And next up, I have some top-down fingerless mitts. Now, top-down fingerless mitts are kind of weird, because you probably think, why would you do that? It's because I'm doing them for a yarn company that primarily dyes gradients. So the whole point is that you can knit your mitt from the top down and knit all of the yarn without running out. If you knit from the bottom up, you can one run out of yarn or two have a bunch left over so those will be coming up shortly I started my sample I don't have the yarn yet so I'm just doing it up in white because I have some left over it's actually the yarn I dye myself striping in but I have some white um, I wanted to do a video tutorial also so I picked white because that's probably going to be easier to see the stitches on the camera so that one's coming Next, um, if you're a member of that group, or if you want to be, there's a link, there's a thread on the podcast group for signing up for it, and then I'll um, invite you, or you can just look up Delusional Knitter Designs group and search for it and join there. But uh, I have a poll on there right now because I had two other mitts I was going to do, and I was thinking of doing convertible mittens, and I also have a cabled mitten pattern. Uh, mitt pattern, fingerless mitt pattern. So I didn't know which one to work on, so I just put up a poll so people can choose. I was leaning towards convertible mitts because, like, two days ago the wind chill factor here was negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, so <laughs> and I was going to work with my fingerless mitts, <laughs> thinking, wow, it'd be really great if I didn't feel like my fingers were gonna fall off right now. So I was thinking of the convertible ones anyway, but. And those also I was thinking of doing in a gradient. Um, I got some goodies from Knit Picks the other day. I was thinking of doing it in the Chroma one, you know, I got this one. So I was thinking of doing it in that, so that would be a worsted weight one. So that will be happening soon, as soon as I finish up the other one. And I'm still working on updating my older patterns to the new pattern template that I created recently, so that's going well. I think I have two left, and then I'll be done. Yay! So, on to Heresy. Um, Hogwarts at Ravelry, the new rotation started, so I'm in that group and trying to do up some stuff. I would like to knit up. I got some, I got several different colors of the Knit Picks um, Wool of the Andes. Because I would love to do, I have Rebecca Danger's 50 Yards of Fun. I think that might be the only book I have from her. 
Um, so I would like to do some of those up in that. And I never have like leftover worsted bits. Um, like I have some, but I don't have a ton of colors. So that's why I get a bunch of those because they're pretty inexpensive. So that'll work for that. And there's also the Harry Potter Knitting and Crochet House Cup. I did not sign up for that one, but if you, even if you're not signed up, there's still some things you can participate in that are a lot of fun. Uh, the Ravelry Book Club right now is reading Finding Alaska by John Green, and I started reading that one. It's a young adult book, so it goes really quick, and it's a very easy read, but I'm finding it's very, very good and enjoyable, and I like it a lot. That author also did, they recently made a movie, not very recently, maybe couple of years ago, um, The Fault in Our Stars. That's a novel by the same author, that movie. The Seasonal Socks Under Knit Along. The current session is from December 21st until March 19th, so you have plenty of time to get your socks in for that. And if you were a winner for the fall session, I have not yet mailed prizes, but I will be doing it shortly. I will PM you when I actually mail it so that you can be on the lookout for it, but... I did not have time today to get them ready to go to the post office and get all my other errands done, so it didn't happen. And tomorrow is Saturday, and everything closes early, and I never get up early enough to go do it. Plus, we have somewhere to go tomorrow, so it's not going to happen <laughs> till next week, at least. The other thing I have on the group now is the Finish Hymn Knit Along, and that... If you're not familiar with it, there's a little logo up there. It's kind of a ripoff of Mortal Kombat, because that was the big thing that they always said at the end when you were fighting the guy. Finish him. So, and what that one is, I'm actually going to extend it a little bit, because I thought I would have recorded before now, and I did not. So I will extend the date, because it's supposed to, sign-ups are supposed to end tomorrow, but I'm going to extend it um, for those of you who only hear about things when you actually watch the podcast, so um, you have to come up with your list ahead of time for these things to count, because the whole point of it is to finish those things that are in your queue, in your favorites, always on your list of things to do. For example, this penguin pillow that I was supposed to make as a gift for like a year or two ago that I never did, you know, things like that. Things, do, things that are not time sensitive. Like, this pillow is not, it's got nothing to do with anything other than I just want to make it for this person because I know they'll really like it kind of things. Or whips that you've had hanging around forever, you know, finally finish them and get them done with. It's going to go from January 1st until April 30th, so it's four months. And what I would like to do is have a monthly random drawing and then have like a grand prize drawing at the end for those that actually finish up their lists. In order to qualify for the grand prize drawing, though, I think I put that you had to have at least five items on your list. Uh, just to make it fair, so it's not, you know, somebody who's not also eligible for the grand prize drawing if they did one thing, you know. Um, let's see. There's also details about that one on the blog, um, on the group, rivalry group. The other thing is the VKNs, the virtual knit nights. The last one we had was a lot of fun. We had quite a few people. We had Debbie. Whims whimsically Knits, and Emily Fricker Basket, and Ruth Ruma One. I apologize if any of those didn't come out right, because I'm not actually looking at a list, I'm looking at my desk. <laughs> There's nothing there. Um, the other thing was, I finally tried, because again, it was freezing and hanging up, and I finally tried using my tablet, and guess what? It worked perfectly fine. So it was me that was freezing it and hanging up all the time. So. From now on, I will use my tablet, which works smoothly, and there's no hang-ups. So the only thing is, instead of like being in person, this also happens in person, but sometimes if somebody's talking, then you can't hear somebody else. So there is a lot of that, what did you just say? What did you say? You know, but that's fine. Um, but it's not hanging up and freezing anymore if I use my tablet, so it's awesome. So it's a much more enjoyable experience for everybody. The next one will be... Oh... I believe I scheduled it for the 21st. It is listed on the Ravelry group if I'm wrong. That's going to be a weekday, because that was a weekday that I had off. And then after that one, or before that one, I'm going to try and plan out a bunch in advance um, so that people have the dates so that if you want to join in, you can. I know it's difficult. People forget. You know, I'm hosting it, so I obviously don't forget the date, but I get it, because there's plenty of things I forget that are online. I'm like, oh, I want to do that. And then I'm like, oh, I missed that. So 
I will try to do whatever I can to make sure that you are notified. Um, I may also, if you want, I'm, I'm really not sure what platforms are the best way to do this, but if you want to like give me your email address or something, I'm more than happy to also email you a reminder the day before or whatever. Because it's also much more enjoyable for me if people show up. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's see. Then we have Ravelry Patterns. I do not have any because I think I've babbled on long enough today. And I had a lot of stuff to do today. Like, it's 9 o'clock right now. I figured I would have already been done podcasting this afternoon. Didn't happen. Delusional Jabber. Reading. I already talked about it. Reading Finding Alaska. I still have not finished The Night Circus because I wanted to read along with the Ravelry group. So I put that one on hold. Um, TV, I don't even know, to be honest with you. A month has gone by, I don't know. And I'm really not up to date on anything. The only thing I was checking out, which I haven't even watched in a week or two, I did watch, although I may have done this since I recorded last, Grace Point, which was that show on Fox with David Tennant. It was a 10 episode like miniseries. It was excellent. And I finished that. What it was based on was Broadchurch, which was the UK version with David Tennant. So <laughs> I figured I would check that one out because it's on Netflix. And um, I started watching that. And it's very, they pretty much just copied the whole, I don't want to say copied because they, you know, they weren't like not saying that it wasn't based on that. But um, it's very much the same. So I'm very curious how it ends, if it ends the same. Um, and that's very good. And I think that's it for TV. And that's about it for this episode. So, yeah. I will post a question when I post up this episode on the Ravelry group. And that question is going to be something along the lines of, what are your philosophies for this year? Because we're not doing goals, we're not doing resolutions, we're not doing plans. <laughs> philosophies. Um... For crafting and life in general. That's what I'm curious about. And I don't think I have anything else to say today. Do I? I don't think so. I will make note later. Oh, look at what I just found. Remember that card I said that I knew was on my desk? It is. Oh, and it is Black Palm. That spindle bowl. That was um, Silly Salmon Designs. That spindle bowl or spindles, if you're interested, they have lots of those. So, yeah, I'm gonna get spinning and knitting and drawing and hopefully get back into photography. I have to talk to my friend again, too. We were talking the other day. A couple of years ago, we did a cool video project with each other. We did them separately on our own, but it was the same, I don't want to say instructions, but the same idea. And we did uh, three months, we took video clips and then pieced them all together with music at the end. So he had his and I had mine. We could share them and stuff and that was a lot of fun. So I was telling him we really need to do another video project this year. Um, yeah. And I need to get up to speed with photography, especially for pattern photos because that's something that's something everybody struggles with because we're we're pattern designers not photographers but you know you can't hire a photographer for your three dollar pattern five dollar pattern so it's difficult to get really good fo photos and there are a lot of people i notice bloggers in general knitters in general who have fantastic photos and i don't know if they have some super duper camera <laughs> or if they're just really good at photography um, my camera's not a bad camera but that's another thing I was wondering if I should invest in a uh, different cam. Like this is a really good video camera, and it's also a really good picture camera. But I'm wondering if I should invest in a better photograph camera. I'm lacking words today so bad. Yeah, on my days off, I think my brain just shuts off after the week at work. I think it's just like, yep, I'm on a day off as well, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So, thank you for joining me. I hope you had wonderful holidays and uh, New Year, and I hope your New Year is going well so far. And I will see you on the Ravelry board. Happy knitting and spinning.